Wednesday. Thanks for joining me for Sleep Wisdom Wednesday. It's a very cold day here in Jackson, Wyoming. I think it was seven degrees when I woke up and still trying to snow, which is awesome. So uh, more snow coming in, which also means that it's going to get warmer, which is the good news. But let's get into the topic today because I want to talk about stress. Now, when I ask people what affects their sleep the most, pretty much everyone says stress. So we all know that, right? We all know that stress affects our sleep. But I want to get into a little bit about exactly what stress is, why and how it affects our sleep, and then best of all, how we can lower our stress or manage our stress so that it doesn't affect our sleep anymore. So the official definition of stress is that it is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. Now, as you probably know, what's stressful for one person isn't necessarily what's stressful for another person. So it is somewhat subjective, so, or it's absolutely subjective. So a more appropriate definition is a condition when we perceive that the demands exceed our personal resources. And so again, even for each individual, that what is stressful can change day to day and year to year. I know with my son, sometimes when he is, you know, misbehaving or really upset, that can be really stressful some days or in some moments and in other moments, I am easily able to handle the situation. So it just depends on how much we already have on our plate and what we are perceiving as, as too much to be able to handle. So what happens during the stress response is that we go into fight or flight. So this is definitely appropriate. I like to talk about if I am hiking in the Tetons near me and a bear, I see a bear and a bear starts chasing me, my body is going to enter a stress response, which is very appropriate in this situation. My body is going to release cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine, all these hormones that are going to help us literally fight or run from that bear. And what that does is when those hormones are released, it's going to, you know, increase blood flow to our extremities. It's going to take away uh, resources from our digestion because you don't need to digest food when you are fighting for your life. It's going to increase blood pressure and heart rate and blood flow and all those things. And that's a, a great response. Now, your body doesn't know the difference between being chased by a bear in the mountains or if you are constantly on the go and stressed or you have a fight with your spouse or you're stuck in traffic and you're late and you're, you know, angry about it. So your body is still going to release those same hormones in response to your stress, even though you don't need to actually run or fight at that time. So what happens, well, before I get into that, um, you know, stress does tend to have a bad rap, kind of like cortisol is seen as our stress hormone, which has very important functions in the body. Same with stress is actually, you know, it's actually a good thing as well. Like we want that to happen when we're being chased by a bear. You actually want some of that stress if you're about to give a big presentation. It helps release those hormones that are going to help you focus and do the best job you can do. So it's just, it becomes bad when we think that it's too much that we can handle. So there's also, you know, if we get stressed too much all the time, then eventually our bodies can't handle it and we're going to get to become fatigued and exhausted. So we want to have, we do want some stress in our lives. We don't want to be totally blah um, and just lazing around all day without any stress at all, but we don't want to have too much stress either. So it's interesting how stress affects us 
in other ways. So it actually is going to make it harder to uh, solve problems and, you know, come up with ways to overcome that stress. So say, you know, I know when I'm rushing around trying to get out the door, if I'm running late for something, that that's when I'm going to spill my son's milk on the floor or break a glass or, you know, something else is going to happen that's going to make it even harder for me to get out the door. But that's normal that that happens because when we're stressed, it activates the activity in our amygdala, which is the emotional part of our brain. And it decreases activity in the hippocampus, which is the cognitive part of our brain. So it literally, we're going to be more in tune with our emotions and it's going to be harder to think and focus and also be productive. So if you're constantly stressed, it's going to make it harder for you to do your job well and, and stay focused and be efficient and productive and creative as well. I know I read a lot about this in a technique I'm going to get to in a little bit about managing your stress, but um, if you're constantly worried about your finances, for example, being constantly stressed about it actually is just going to keep you stuck in that. And you're not going to be able to find creative ways to, to figure out how to get unstuck and how to you know better your finances. So the more we can calm that stress response, then the better we're going to be able to be in all parts of our life. Um, there is different kinds of stress. If you've been following me, you know that, you know, what I'm talking about here is mainly the mental stress. So that's things going on in our head that we think that we can't handle. There's also uh, physical stress that's happening in our bodies that we may not even know about. Or that we may, like exercise is stressful. It's a good stress that helps our bodies become stronger, for example. Unless you're already depleted in cortisol, then exercise can actually, you know, strenuous exercise can be harmful. But um, there's also physical stress of, say, your body being under a lot of inflammation. So if that's that you have... Um, a parasite, which I've talked about in the past many times, if that kind of constant low-grade inflammation is happening all the time, that's stress on your body. You know, there's stress from toxins that we're exposed to all the time. So any of these things also add to your stress. And so that's why it's important to be looking at your stress holistically and not just um, managing the mental part, but also the physical part as well. So let's get into why or how stress affects our sleep. So again, when we're under stress, your body releases cortisol. As you know, cortisol has a lot of good effects. We actually need it during the day to be alert, to be productive, but it should be at pretty much zero by the time it's nighttime and time for bed. But if you're constantly up to here with stress all day long, your body's going to have a hard time lowering that at nighttime when it's supposed to. And if you have any cortisol in your uh, bloodstream, it's going to suppress melatonin, your sleepy hormone. And so that's going to make it hard to stay asleep. It's also, or sorry, to fall asleep. It's also going to make it hard to stay asleep as well. So if you're really tired and you've built up what's called sleep pressure during the day, then you're going to possibly be tired enough to fall asleep at night. But if you have that cortisol still kicking in your body, it's going to wake you up. And so if you tend to wake up in the middle of the night, just thoughts racing, feel like you're stressed, you know, like in a panic, that's what's happening there. Your body has too much cortisol when it's supposed to have zero and it's totally going to wake you up. So let's get into the most important part of what we can actually do about it. I'm sure you've heard of, you know, doing yoga, of course, is going to help you manage stress. Um, exercising is huge for releasing stress and, and also very important for sleeping as well. Our bodies need to move every day. Um, being out in nature, especially while exercising, um, has an even more beneficial uh, part of, of relieving stress, 
But there's even more that we can do besides, of course, I recommend those things as as often as you can, you know, exercise every day, yoga, however much you can go to it. Uh, Meditation is going to be a great tool. And literally what happens during meditation is that your blood pressure lowers, your heart rate lowers, your cortisol levels lower. So that is one of the reasons why I really recommend meditation every day. If you are new to meditation, I suggest starting it during the middle of the day, even if you just start for two minutes at a time, for five minutes at a time, and go up from there. But even five minutes a day is going to be really beneficial. There are apps like Calm and Headspace that have guided meditations. I started with guided meditations, and now I literally just uh, sit and focus on my breath. I've gotten into something called Ziva meditation because I read Emily Fletcher's book, um, Stress Less, Accomplish More. And so she recommends meditating for 15 minutes twice a day. And I've actually been trying to do that as much as possible. And so now I now I like to meditate first thing in the morning and then either mid-afternoon or if, especially if I've been out in the evening, then I like to meditate before bed. But again, if you're new to it, I recommend doing it in the middle of the day before you do it before bed because that anything new before bed can cause anxiety and we don't want that because that's going to release cortisol as well. So definitely meditation is huge. The reason I do it in the morning is because I think that it's so important to have a morning routine that isn't stressful. So I actually started something that I you called a miracle morning that I learned from Hal Elrod. It's been over a year ago now, and I think I've talked about this before in this group, but it's totally changed my life. So before I was doing that, I would literally wake up when my son woke up and he was one or two at the time when he was one, sometimes he'd wake up crying and that's how I would wake up, rush in, get him, start the day. That's starting the day in a very stressful way. You're going to spike your cortisol really high first thing in the morning and it, it's really hard to lower it after that. So it's the same if you wait to an alarm clock. Um, I know I realize that sometimes we have to wake up to alarms. Ideally, if you can get to a place where you're going to bed early enough that you are going to wake up naturally at the right time, then that is ideal. Think of what the word alarm means. It's alarming, right? It's going to immediately release cortisol too much cortisol first thing in the morning. And then if you wake up to that, jump out of bed, start rushing around, you know, getting ready for work, all the things, you're starting very high, very high cortisol levels. So imagine instead waking up without an alarm clock, getting up and um, doing something relaxing. For me, it is meditating. I also walk my dog and I say my affirmations and I write what I'm grateful for first thing in the morning. So that's starting the day off in a very relaxing way. And that is going to help you set up for healthy cortisol levels throughout the day. Now, besides a morning routine, a bedtime routine is also going to help you wind down at night, lower those cortisol levels. Um, That's why I suggest what I call a power down hour where you stay away from screens for an hour before bed and do relaxing things. Listen to relaxing music, take a bath, read or listen to audio books, meditate if you've been doing that. So again, anything we can do to lower our cortisol levels before bed is going to help you sleep so much better. Now, other things you can do during the day to lower your cortisol levels, lower your stress, is to take recovery breaks. And so these should be scheduled breaks. So say every hour or two, say every hour and a half, you literally, you know, plan on working on a task for that certain amount of time. And then when that hour and a half, um, an hour and a half later, then you take a break and that's you know, taking 10 minutes, of course, you might need to go to the bathroom and get water, staying off screen, staying off social media, and whether that's going outside and staying in the sunshine or taking a quick walk or 
doing sitting at your desk and doing some deep breathing. But doing that every hour and a half throughout the day, again, every time you do that, you're going to lower your cortisol and that's going to help you regulate it when it gets into nighttime as well. Now, I also have been reading the book Essentialism. So thank you to Greta for recommending that book. It turns out I had actually bought it months ago and just hadn't finished reading it. But I just read the chapter about play and how important play is um, for creativity, for our work, but also for lowering stress. So doing something just for the joy of it is really important to do every single day. And this is a good reminder for me because I'm guilty of um, squeezing work into every minute I can because I only have you know a limited amount of time I can work. But taking that time to play is is really key. And actually, my first business coach a couple summers ago, um, totally, I think the most valuable thing she offered me was that you should absolutely take a break and go mountain biking in the summer. Like start living your dream life now. Don't wait until you're successful because you might get to where you're never successful enough for you to allow yourself to do these things. So you start now, you start having the life you want to live. And so for me, that is working for a few hours in the morning when I'm most productive. It's taking a break in the middle of the day, going on a bike ride, or right now I go cross country skiing, maybe backcountry skiing if I have the time, you know, get to walk the dog as well, and then coming back and working some more. And I remember that summer going on this mountain bike ride and having so much fun. And literally, I wrote an entire blog post in my head while I was on that mountain bike ride. I didn't plan on working or anything. And I was having this great time. But all these ideas were just coming to me. And so that reinforced what my business coach was telling me that this play is so important for our work and it's actually going to help your work and taking those breaks is good for your brain. It's definitely good for your stress level. It's definitely good for your sleep as well. Now, one more technique I have that has really helped me in stressful moments, and I haven't talked about this at all before, but it's something called EFT, emotional freedom technique or tapping. It definitely feels a little woo-woo to me. It's a little out there, so that's why I don't talk about it, but I think it's time for me to start talking about it because it's a tool that has been helping me for over a year as well. But you literally tap on acupuncture points around your head and face and um, kind of repeat what you're, or talk about what you're stressed about and then um you know, start then start turning to the positive things that you can rewrite what you're what you're saying in your head. And there's been a lot of studies done on this technique, and it's totally shown to lower cortisol, and it totally works for me. So I plan on becoming an EFT practitioner this year. I'm not there yet, so I'm not going to get into the details. I really recommend the website, The Tapping Solution. They also have an app with. Uh, you know, guided tapping uh, that you can do on your own. But I have to start talking about it because it's been such a game changer for me. And when I'm feeling panicked or upset about something, it totally helps. And literally after just a few minutes of tapping, I just feel at ease again. And so it's something I try and do every day. And I would recommend it to anyone, especially if you tend to have anxiety and things like that, or tend to be stressed a lot. Now with my clients, I definitely share all of these techniques. I also dive deeper into, you know, are they really happy? (laughs) Are you in the right relationship? Are you in the right job? Because knowing that, you know, knowing deep down without consciously knowing it, that you're not in the place you want to be is, is totally stressful. It's this underlying stress. You may not even realize it because it's just constantly there, but that's, what's totally going to affect your sleep as well. So we do some journaling. We, you know, we, we, they don't even have to talk to me about what it is if they don't want to, but 
just, you know, diving deeper into that form of stress management. So I hope that this has been helpful about talking about what stress is, that we, you know, it's what we perceive as stressful, you know, that's more than we can handle is going to be stressful. There's also physical stress and, um, and it's totally going to affect your sleep if you are constantly stressed all day long. So doing things like meditating, making sure that you're playing every day, starting your morning off in a non-stressful way, finishing in a non-stressful way with a bedtime routine, um, getting into tapping if that's something that sounds good to you. All of these things are going to help manage your stress. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, especially Alicia. And let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the group.